Hi and welcome back to the Impact Lounge. Uh, I'm your host tonight, Adam. Unfortunately, there was no Adam and Rose show this week uh, as I was on ho- uh, vacation, as you guys in America say. Yes, I was on holiday this week, so no Adam and Rose show. But in its place, I'm delighted to say that in a minute I'm going to be joined by Trey Miguel so uh, of the Rascals. So he'll be on in a second. But before I do that, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, make sure you do hit the subscribe button. Uh, on YouTube and leave your comments below. We love to see your comments. We've got other interviews coming up. Uh, we've got Cody Dina next week, next week, so that should be quite interesting. A guy who hasn't actually debuted on the show yet, uh, but he will be coming in as well. So leave your questions below. Let us know your thoughts on this uh, interview as well. Should be fun. Uh, really, never heard Trey Miguel being interviewed anywhere else before, so this is a bit of an unknown quantity for me. Uh, and we're going to try and have a little bit of fun with it tonight as well. So hit the subscribe. Make sure you check out the other content. My show, The Adam Rowe Show, which is appears every week. And also Brent, uh, Brent, Trent and Carl, who do the weekly impact reviews. Make sure you do check that out as well. A lot of fun in there. So uh, final thing I just really want to say is that when we do these interviews, we usually do also um, appear on Twitter so that we can ask questions for... So, for example, you want to ask a question of Cody Dina next week, then make sure you do follow me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle being at V, the letter V for Victor, the number two, then Adam and IL for Impact Lounge. So that's at V2 Adam IL. Make sure you do follow me on Twitter so that you can keep up to date with all the new shows that we're doing and also for any interviews that are coming up to make sure that you get your question in. So that's it. That's all all, all the selling of this uh, as far as we need to do tonight. In a moment, when we come back from the break, uh, we will be joined by Trey. Talk to you soon. Okay, that's uh, that's me back, and I'm delighted uh, to say I've got Trey on the line now. Good afternoon, Trey. Where are you tonight? Or today, should I say? Oh, I am, I am actually at home in Toledo, Ohio. Fantastic. So hopefully, well, before uh, before we start, if you, uh, listeners, I just want to let you know, Trey and I just had a quick word there, and and as a, as I promised in my opening gambit before before I called Trey, uh, we are going to have a bit of fun tonight. We're, it's going to be quite relaxed. Uh, we're not going to do the usual questions, although there might be one or two thrown in there. So uh, sit back and enjoy, everyone. So, so Trey, I'm going to start off with with a bit of a quiz question for you. Okay. So okay. Uh, the question is, who did you say this about? Okay, this is on social media now. Uh, I already know who. I already know what you're going to ask me. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I, I was going to ask. It's a spicy asshole, just like it's spice. daddy. <laughs> Oh wait, never mind. I, I was wrong, dude. All right, no. Uh, I was talking about. I bought a uh, a new pet snake, and it was just <laughs> this thing wouldn't stop striking me when I'd walk past. I put it in the tank, and it dislocated. Like, all right, so snakes have like four different jaws, and it like it like completely like broke one of them trying to strike me, and it hit the tank. I posted. I was like, "It was just a spicy asshole, just like it's daddy." <laughs> <laughs> you need to blow some smoke in that uh, aquarium of it to chill it out a little you, bit. You want? Do you, do you want to know what I thought you were going to? Yeah, ask yeah, God, I do want to know now because it's, it's, it's better to be better than the question I asked. All right, so like maybe a week and a half ago, I posted a picture of me drinking a beer outside of a wrestling ring, and I told a story without naming the person. And I thought you were going to ask who is the story about because I said something like. Um, I remember this match, uh, the guy I wrestled that night got really mad at me for not having a moment with him afterward, but I'm not going to lie, from from the time the bell rang, all I was thinking about was drinking that beer, and damn it, that's the only reason why I wanted to win the match. <laughs> I, uh, you're not going to tell me, are you? It was Tim Dunst. All right, okay, well, there you go, listeners. There's an exclusive for you. Always knew we'd get one one day, but there you go. That. <laughs> but... I, I, I mean, what, what's he going to do? <laughs> yeah. good point good point anyway I'm afraid of him <laughs> so anyway uh, by the way uh, and, you know we have guests on all the time and um uh, so i'm not trying to talk to the fact that you're on but no, we, we have you know guests come on all the time but but sometimes you know it's like pulling teeth trying and i, I know we're going to enjoy this one tonight but the reason I, I, i'm kind of prefixing it saying that we have people on all the time i don't always say 
I'm loving the stuff that you're doing at the moment. You know, we, we but genuinely, the, the rascal stuff on Impact at the moment is, for me, the highlight of the show. And what's made it even better is the introduction of Moose. So just want to find out, where did all this come about? Did, was it your, well, was it the three of you's idea to do this kind of, well, people have said like the 70s show, or however you want to describe it. Was, was it your Was it your idea? All right. I'm not going to even lie to you, bro. I have no idea who officially came up with this shit. <laughs> one, one day we're at CZW last summer. You know, uh, Dez was signed, but Zach and I weren't. And uh, Myron was, uh, and this is when Myron was featured as a rascal, um, Myron Reed. We're, we have CZW that day, and I think, it's, I think it's best of the best. I could be wrong. Um... I, I think I am wrong. It's whatever day Zach won the Wyatt title. It, it, they could have been the same day. Um, but anyway, I just get told, hey, we're we're doing 70s promos. We're... Go. So that we're doing a, that 70s show promo, and I had never watched the show before, so I had no idea what was going on. So someone showed me a clip. I think Dez showed me one of the basement scenes from the television show, and I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. And we did it, and, the like, the promo, I don't think, ever saw the light of day. And uh, But it was Sammy Callahan's idea to present that at Impact and try to get them to sign it, and they, they loved it, and they signed us. Fantastic. I mean, as I said, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bullshit you. When I first saw it, I thought, "Oh man, this 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 could get awkward." But week upon week, it's grown on me. And now, as I said, it's my favourite thing. It's the thing that you know. Sometimes you know when you you, you, you fast forwarding through your DVR, you get to the rascal section, and, and I've got to stop it. It's brilliant. I love it. Absolutely love it. So <laughs> I don't. I don't think we planned on getting so ridiculous with it. Like when we first started, we we had no idea how to handle it. You know, we were just kind of like. Uh, the Friday, I remember filming the first one and they didn't really have they were like hey all that you have to talk about is you know you have a match in two weeks you have to put that over and we're just like how do we spend over a minute talking about a debut match that we don't have a, like marquee opponents for <laughs> or anything like that so we're just like we have we have a lot of dead time we have to fill it and I think when we figured out how we wanted these promos to go that's where like we can actually start getting pretty ridiculous with this if we want to. So it got to the point where, like, <clears throat> we show up for tapings and they're just like, we ask, like, hey, what bullet points do we have to point out? And they're like, you only have to mention the match from last week and the max or in the match tonight. And then we we put that over for like ten seconds maybe, and then the rest is us figuring out how, what's popular, what what will people laugh at, what what haven't people probably seen? And while like the last one, we decided we're like. Let's uh, let's do a Friday skit of the porch scene when you know Red has the black eye and Debo steals his chain and all that stuff, and Moose being Debo. So like, <clears throat> we just like we we try to think of what what would make me laugh instead of what would make others laugh, you know? Because I feel like that there there can be a disconnect there sometimes, and sometimes like I could I couldn't imagine being a stand up comedian and trying to write material that you think might make others laugh i would try to write what would make me laugh and just see if it works or not so i just we kind of just try to go with that uh mentality about it well well it's working take that as, from a fan it's working so have any of them i don't know whether it's don or scott or whoever's the guy who who okays the stuff that goes to air have they turned down anything have they said no that's too stupid or uh, have they asked you to amp it up i mean have they given any creative no. direction at all more yeah, more than it, there's there's some ideas that we come up with. They're like ah, we <laughs> we we've had some stuff turned down. Uh, it's it's actually uh, Jimmy Jacobs who works with us, and he's actually Jimmy is amazing to work with, and uh, he's he's really keen on like like I feel like he he understands what it's like to be in our position, and he's been in the position where. He's been given stuff that just hasn't worked, maybe. So he's just like, look, like this works for you on the indies, and why fix what isn't broken? If you guys can come up with your own material and you know 
within the guidelines that we give you, you, you pretty much can do this yourself, just run it by us, and we still have to okay everything. So that's kind of how it's been working, honestly. And it's, it's amazing that it's worked so so easily because it feels really good to make, you know, that, that's one last backstage segment someone has to write because, you know, we we went out of our way to prepare for it. And that just makes that makes morale better, you know. One person has one less thing to do. Now they can focus on something else. Maybe they have more time to do anything else. And it, it doesn't take any, you know, time out of our day to sit around and try to come up with these ideas. I, I take it it helps as well that the, I, it, it appears that the three of you are, are, are best friends in real life as well. So uh, you can tell yeah, me otherwise. Yeah, you, that you... really. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, we we actually are. We we all lived together at one point, even uh, when we were training in Dayton, Ohio. So on that note, then, because you know, I love myself a soundbite from, from an interview that I can then start, you know, throwing about and saying that you said this. Uh, obviously. All great stables and tag teams eventually split or, or go their own way for a little while. So, out of the three of you, who's going to be the Genetti of the group? Oh, damn. <laughs> I'll probably end up being the Genetti. Those <laughs> most, those, dude, they're, they're so damn hard to keep up with, bro. Des and Zach are impossible to keep up with. Now, what's going to be funny is I can't tell you, what, like, once I get Genetti, it's going to be down to a Mike, uh, you know, a Sean and Genetti all over again. There's going to be two Genetti's. There can only be one Sean in this scenario. So now the real question is, who's the second Genetti? <laughs> <laughs> let's let us let's hear it. I want to hear the dirt. Basically, you're saying who's the oh, short? Who's the short of the group? My cough. This is going to be an awkward ass circle the next time we get together. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, I want to go back just to Impact at the uh-huh. moment and and the stuff with Moose. I mean, you know, I, I was a big critic of, of Moose, certainly when he was doing his face stuff. If, well, you know, before you guys joined, I'm sure you watched the program and you saw Moose going up against Aries and all these kind of things. But since he's turned heel, he, he's been awesome. And I, I think for some reason, he's just clicked with the three of you. He, he's been awesome. What, what's your been experience with him? And, and does he need a bit more direction that, than, you know, the three of you? No, nah, Moose has been hilarious to work with, honestly. Like, he brings a lot of great ideas to the table, too. So, like, you know, by no means, no one's stepping on each other's toes, but, like, we, we, you know, when he's a part of our program, we're like, hey, this is what we're thinking. And he's like, oh, what if we had this? We're like, yes. And a lot of times we just, we'll end up, like, kind of just, like, doing it a few times and seeing, like, what organically comes out. And then, like, that's how we find little one-liners to add in or little facial expressions and stuff like that. And so, like, I, I feel like, Moose should just permanently be a part of our circles because he makes them more entertaining for me to watch too. <laughs> I, 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 well, put it this way, I don't think anyone would complain if the program carried on a little bit. And I know it has to change up a little bit because it can't just be Moose facing you one on one each week. <laughs> but I, I think that he he actually has grown by by being in a program with yourselves. Now, you, you said about what if, what if he's like? So the, it, we're supposed to be in a treehouse. What if he's like the landlord to the treehouse? <laughs> We pay Moose rent to have our curtained off tree house. I think that'd be interesting. I hope one day they they actually manage some visual effect to show that off as well. As opposed, I mean that yeah, would be that funny. would be really cool. Some amazing, you know, zoom back on a camera to to reveal where you actually are. That would be good, actually. Yeah, there right you go. there, you go. So you you mentioned about the, the rascals um, and maybe Moose kind of joining you or being part of it for a longer term. Uh, as I said, we, we put some questions out on Twitter earlier on and, and someone did ask a question. So, um, and, and really you've covered a bit of it, but, and you mentioned a former member of the Rascals, but how did you all meet up and are there any other Rascals hanging in the wings waiting to, to join Impact as well? We have, we all came together at Rockstar Pro. Uh, well, D- Des and Zach came together at Rockstar Pro. Des was being, tr- Des was from uh, a place I think one CW uh, in Ohio. That that's where he had made his home in Ohio. He had came from there, and Zach was training at the Rockstar Pro Academy. And Dez went down there for a tryout match. And Dez and Zach had to wrestle each other in the tryout match. And I guess like 
it, they just clicked. It was amazing. I didn't see the match, but I've never heard anyone say anything else about it other than it, they just clicked immediately. And then I met them at my home promotion in Toledo. Uh, they were booked on a couple of shows, and we hit it off. Zach and I ended up wrestling each other, and it was the same exact story. And then we all kind of, uh, we were all brought into OI4K, um, the Ohio was for Killers under Dave, Jake, and Sammy. And uh, we ended up, like, that's where we kind of, like, started teaming up as a Y4K. We would do uh, six mans with us, and then they would be, and then Dave, Jake, and Sammy would be the other six man in the group. Well, and then sorry. they decided they wanted to branch off, and they changed their names, and then uh, they changed their names again, and then um, I deci- we all decided, like, hey, like, let's do this trios thing, and then, we're like, no, let's see. Well, at first it started, you know, with Myron Reed, who's the fourth and only uh, other rascal. And then uh, we just, uh, us three ended up signing to Impact, and Myron got his offer at MLW. So you've you've been pretty much together as a unit since since your training days. That's that's pretty awesome. It's not many people that can say that they stay together that long. Now, now Trey, I, I'm I'm conscious of time because I know this is part of maybe a quite quite a few interviews you're doing this evening. So uh, I, I, I'll finish it off with a couple of quick fire questions if that's all right. But but uh, okay. it, it's been great having you on tonight. Honestly, I really enjoyed this, and we're definitely going to have to do this again. But one of the other questions for that we got on Twitter, and this is from uh, Godwin, who. Uh, According to his Twitter handle, he is the god of sports. Uh, so congratulations on that position, Godwin. Um, the question is, uh, what's your favorite promotion other than Impact? And I've got to caveat that because one of my co-hosts on the show uh, is heavily involved in AAW in uh, Illinois. So <laughs> what's your favorite promotion? And I know he's met you quite a lot of times and, and he's talked to you backstage, uh, Trent. I don't know if you, know, if you remember Trent. But, um, so what's your favorite promotion other than Impact? That is, man, that's hard as hell because honestly, like, different promotions hold, like, different, like, places in my heart. Um, like, a, like you mentioned AAW. AAW, when I moved to Dayton, Ohio, um, I remember Dave Chris telling me that that was at least a three-year journey to get to. He said, dude, he's like, he's like, I'm probably, realistically, I'm probably not going to be able to get Danny to give you a look for at least, like, three years. That's what he told me. And I was working for AAW less than seven months later, full time. Like I've I've been there as a regular ever since, and I feel like AAW has watched me grow more than any other promotion has. I, I feel like I really grew from like a boy to a man in front of Chicago. So that like AAW has like one of the most special places in my heart that any wrestling promotion could for reasons like that. Well, that, that um. But like I mean, I, and it and it's no knock on anywhere because like uh, over in the UK, the Fight Fight Club Pro and Southside were the the most amazing places, and they treated me so well. And I would do anything for either of those companies if they said, "Hey, like we need you to do two ladder matches today," you know, and they they really needed it. I you know I wouldn't think twice about it. Um, that's just the way that they take care of their guys and the way that they make you feel, you know to have someone fly you from another country and treat you that way is just, it's crazy. But <clears throat> overall, I, I want to say, and I'm, and this is based off of one time being there, um, and that's PWG, and that's because, you know, since I started wrestling, that was one of the first DVDs I got was a PWG DVD, and I was just, like, so freaking blown away by the wrestling and the performers. And ever since then... I, I, I'm, and I still am one of those, those YouTube nerds that waits for the, uh, the YouTube trailers. So, honestly, like, and it's, aside from getting signed, one of my, one of my absolute biggest goals in wrestling was to see myself, like, in one of those PWG YouTube trailers. And so, like, the last one that just came out, I'm in, and I about cried watching it. I really did. After, after I wrestled at PWG, I've never, like, broke down to tears over a match before. And I'm telling you, I cried, like, probably for the next 24 hours after I was done wrestling at PWG. Like, I just couldn't believe that it happened. And the reception that I got from people, 
and the response and the cheers and just like the visual from being inside the ring looking out like it was so much crazier than I could have ever imagined and like, I just got to watch the match I got the DVD in the mail uh, yesterday or two days ago and watching it back like I would I would give anything to like redo that match I really would wow. That's a pretty comprehensive answer, Trey, and and thank you for that, and thank you for your time tonight. And I'm going to leave you with one final question, and it's one that I always do ask all my guests. Uh, well, it's two I usually ask. Uh, one is one is about creepy DMs, and uh, <laughs> that the Jordan Grace told us about to see if you had any. You can oh, answer no. that. You can answer that as well if you like. But I did say I was going to ask. I wasn't going to ask you any of those regular questions tonight. But I will ask you this question: What is the worst or most stupid question you've ever been asked? Just so that I can line it up for the next guy. That's usually what I ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think about that one. The creepy DMs, I do have an answer for that one. Um, actually, I don't get creepy DMs. You know, I get a lot of hate mail, though. Really? Yeah. Uh, people are... when So when a, I started dating the girl that I'm with now, Alicia, too, and um, the amount of hate mail I got from her male fan base was just, wow. I mean... It, it, I mean, it, it's died down a lot since, but it, it, it made me want to, like, just get off my phone completely. I, like, I was almost done with social media. Well, don't, 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 uh, listeners, if, if you're on social media, make sure you do follow Trey, by the way. Uh, that's at the Trey Miguel on uh, Twitter. So make sure you do follow him. I thought I'd Actually, th- throw a little uh, plug there as well. I remember. I can think of the, the dumbest question I've ever been asked. It wasn't in an interview, and it had nothing. I was I was just traveling for wrestling, right? And um, and I mean, like this is total. This is the dumbest question I've ever been asked. I feel like I just <laughs> I just went through uh, security at an airport, and I can't remember what one. Oh, I was leaving Canada actually, and uh, so I'm at YYZ in Toronto, and I left a Mountain Dew bottle in my backpack, and. So they pull my bag to the side so they can search it. And the, the TSA agent, he pulls out my bag, or he pulls my bag open, and he goes, you can't have the Mountain Dew. And then he goes, you want me to throw it away? I said, he said, I'll throw it away or you can drink it. I said, well, yeah, can I drink it? He said, you can't drink it past this point. So he threw it away. And I was like, then what the fuck did you ask me for? <laughs> <laughs> what? I did. I was pissed. He asked me if I wanted to drink it. If not, I'm going to throw it away. I said, all right, yeah, I'll drink it. He said, you can't drink it past the point of the security thing. And you can't leave the security thing either. So I was like, then throw it away. What are we doing? That that was where you learned the art of how to turn heel in a single motion. (laughs) Anyway. pissed. <laughs> Trey, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure. I knew I was going to enjoy it tonight. I really did know I was going to enjoy it, and I wish we had more time, but I know you've got other interviews. So, honestly, it's been a pleasure getting you on, and hopefully you'll come back when uh, I've got Trent and the other guys on, and we can have, uh, maybe even get the three of you on at the same time, and and uh, join you in your uh, treehouse. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, it's been, as I said, uh, absolutely awesome, and uh, we'll catch up again soon. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Well, that was Trey Miguel there. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. And uh, if you did, remember, we've got Cody Dina hopefully coming up next week. Uh, Make sure you follow us on um, on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Check out Carl and Trent's weekly impact reviews and the Adam and Rose show. Hopefully you enjoy that each and every week as well. But for the time in, thanks for tuning in. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can get me at V2AdamIL. So uh, we'll catch you next week. Take care.